Thank you for tuning in. One of the most important concerns that we have in our community is access to health care. Health care has become a major topic of concern in relationship to how we can effectively be able to get the services that are necessary for our families to live a very positive and safe life. One of the things that we have learned is that since President Obama has been elected, he has been able to make a number of improvements, especially when it comes to the life of our families and the existence of what are the priorities that challenge our lifestyles today. With me now is Mr. Robert Dansby, who is the founder of Cofactors, and his vice president, Ms. Crystal Jones. Thank you very much for giving us an opportunity to share with our viewers this very important issue that everyone is going to have to be a part of, especially in the near future. As you know, President Obama signed a very important law, which is called the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act. And it significantly improves on the way in which we will have health care coverage in our lifetime to go forward. Mr. Dansby, you are the founder of a program called Cofactors. This program itself has a relevant opportunity to be able to help people understand exactly how the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act is going to be effective in our communities. Can you share with us the history of how it actually became existent? Yes, I'd be happy to. The Affordable Care Act, otherwise known as Obamacare, is the result of actually a long legislative process that began as early as the uh, Kennedy administration and has gone through a number of different um, manifestations including the proposal for a health care program by uh, Hillary Clinton and ultimately uh, culminated in the enactment of the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, which we now call Obamacare. It has a number of very important provisions that will benefit people in our community who have been uninsured. Well, certainly with so many individuals that were a part of the process, there was a lot of conversation. In fact, the debate itself almost got to a point where it would not get approved. What happened? Yes, there were a lot of uh, vested interests in the healthcare industry that sought to maintain the status quo, right? The healthcare industry is a fairly complex industry with a lot of players in terms of hospitals and insurance companies and uh, some of the lobbying that was manifested through the Republican, can I say that? Oh uh, yeah, you can. Through the uh, Republican stakeholders were a representative of those vested interests. But nevertheless, uh, sense of uh, fairness prevailed in the end because with the passage of the Affordable Care Act in 2010, we now have a platform for making substantial fundamental changes in how health care is delivered in this country. Now we know we're moving forward to now the beginning of the Patient and Affordable Care Act started around 2008 during the first part of the President's administration, am I correct? Correct. And at this point, now that it has been approved, there are some implementations that have to be done. Specifically, how does the relationship of service care models become a part of this process? Right. In order to 
uh, improve the efficiency of health care delivery, it is necessary to make some fundamental changes in how health care is delivered. There are approximately 35 million people in the U.S. who are uninsured and they will be coming into a health care paradigm that already has a shortage of health care providers. There are shortages of physicians, there are shortages of nurses, and so in order to accommodate all of these new patients, there have to be improvements in the efficiency of health care delivery. There are a couple of ways that the Obamacare intends to facilitate such improvements in efficiency. One of them is by implementing what are called health information exchanges. These are basically uh, software-driven, data center-driven operations that facilitate the exchange of healthcare information among healthcare providers. That's really important in this new realm. Another example would be the implementation of what's called health insurance exchanges. These are the vehicles through which health insurance providers will offer coverage uh, for uninsured people. And looking at it from that perspective and knowing that there is a large array of different methods that will become existent, you know, the healthcare companies uh, do do a lot of business in our community through hospitals, clinics, and various physicians have provided services. Now, this whole idea of beginning to become a part of a industry that is going to give everyone an opportunity to have health care is going to need some type of way of, as we will, navigating through the process. Ms. Jones, explain to us exactly how that process is going to be implemented. Okay, sure. Um, through the exchanges, there will be patient navigators, and the navigator's role will be to enroll people into these new health insurance plans. Uh, and that's where, where we are involved in. Um, it's going to be a large undertaking because we do have approximately 35 million uninsured who will be entering into the, the current health care system. 35 million people is no you know, it's an undaunting task. Yes. And identifying to the fact that we're talking specifically about New Jersey and that it's going to be across the state, mm -hmm. the implementation of the process is going to take a considerable amount of time. What is the driving force for this type of job creation? Uh, the driving force really, again, it's, it has to do with these amount of people. Um, also, patient navigators, after the enrollment period is over, there's still a different type of navigation that then becomes involved. And, and that's patient navigation in the pure sense, um, or health advisors. And what that role will do is to help people navigate their journey through accessing care because even though you now have access to the insurance exchanges now you want to start using your using these benefits but at this point if you've not gone to the doctor in many years because you did not have the 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 benefits the insurance benefits to do so now we're faced with other challenges sometimes these challenges can be overwhelming and just daunting. So a patient navigator at that point, that's when the real work begins, Herb. Um, then we take people and we usher them through the different facilities. If they, through primary care, they might need to see a specialist depending on if there may be chronic uh, disease uh, or whatever type of conditions might be involved. Uh, oftentimes there are social services that need to be uh, secured for people. and. When you're dealing with an illness, particularly a serious illness, it's very difficult to just get the normal things done. And these challenges just become more than, than any of us can deal with. So the patient navigator is that guide to help people get through these tough times. Maybe they need um, a, 
a discussion with the physician and they find difficulty in that. So we can kind of be like a liaison, mm -hmm. you know, maybe family members who are not located here but are certainly interested in knowing what's going on with their loved one. And we can maybe facilitate conversations just to, to help ease that burden as well. The uh, patient uh, navigator has a history within itself. It isn't something that just evolved out of nowhere. Um, one of the things that I thought uh, would be uh, very relevant and very interesting, Mr. Dansby, is to really get an idea exactly how that process for the patient navigator actually started. There is a history. Yes, there is. Patient navigation as a professional discipline was started at Harlem Hospital in response to issues that they encountered uh, with high mortality rates among breast cancer patients and they looked at the situation and determined that a principal cause of this high mortality rate was because of the fact that patients being treated at Harlan Hospital were coming for treatment at a later stage and they developed the patient navigation program as a community outreach program in order to make people more aware of breast cancer risk, make them aware of breast cancer self-examinations that they could do in order to facilitate earlier detection, and to implement a uh, advisory role where patient navigators would assist patients in working through sometimes difficult issues that they face in getting care. And this was implemented by uh, Dr. Harold Freeman at uh, Harlem Hospital and now has become a national movement. And thinking about the idea of it now becoming part of a model for employment, there are individuals that have skills that can be very effective in this particular industry. And then there are others who might be interested in becoming a part of it. It does relevantly open up a whole new opportunity for employment, which is what this whole process was supposed to develop. Exactly. It, uh, it actually, patient navigation is just one of many new employment opportunities that have been created by Obamacare. There's not a lot of discussion about this in the press, but it's real. And there are huge opportunities in a wide variety of areas from patient billing to patient coding to patient navigation, uh, more technical areas. There are a number of opportunities that open up as a result of the need to implement Obamacare and to be able to manage and operate the delivery of health care going forward. And I think, Mrs. Jones, you kind of touched on the idea about how exciting it is for an individual mm -hmm. to even get into a career opportunity because there will be some certification involved. Yes, there will. As Dr. Dansby stated, um, Dr. Harold Freeman was the pioneering physician with this, and we do plan on having people get certified so that they can become patient navigators. And a lot of this is is acting in, in connection with the JOBS Act. And the JOBS Act is meant that it was actually a bill that was signed into law on April 5th of 2012 by uh, President Obama. And that act is to get people back on the pathway to jobs and to work. So we are actively um, also pursuing that to get economic growth into the communities, get jobs out to people. But even bigger than jobs, we really want to see this as career opportunities, long term. This is not a short term plan. So we're very excited about that. You know, it appears that there are a lot of details about this whole process and the reason why this whole idea about patient navigators and organizations such as COFAX is going to be co-factors. 
cofactors, and we have to make sure that that's relevantly clear, <laughs> you know, because there will be a number of other organizations that will be appropriately applying for this kind of opportunity, and we have to ensure you that in our community we're going to be supporting the organizations that really have become involved with doing what they knew need to do to ensure that there will be a safety process, a safe process in relationship to how we can be able to produce it effectively. But uh, one of the things that I really wanted to talk about is that this will be helping uninsured, but information for individuals who are insured can be also effectively applied if they come and be a part of your outreach effort. That's correct. The role that we are playing early on will focus on enrollment of uninsured people and that process will start on October 1 of this year and uh, the exact time frames are still being worked out and will be announced later. Once the enrollment process is completed, the initial enrollment process, then people who have enrolled will need to get advice uh, with regards to accessing care and that's where the patient navigation comes in. That patient navigation set of services can be provided to newly enrolled people who were previously uninsured or it can be provided to people who already have coverage. We have developed a number of alliances that will facilitate us providing these patient navigation services in collaboration with other community organizations and other health care providers. You know, Mr. Dansby, you have uh, been certified and trained as a patient navigator, but Ms. Jones, you, you really have a grassroots involvement in terms of how you've been significantly involved in a number of different institutions with health in our community. Why don't you kind of share with us a little bit of your background? Okay, well, um, I began doing patient navigation a few years ago. I worked several years at UMDNJ, the University of Medicine and Dentistry of New Jersey here in Newark. Um, I've also done work at Newark Beth Israel's palliative care department, mm -hmm. working in the ICU. Uh, and I also did some educational um, outreach for Morristown Memorial Hospital. Um, some of my own personal and professional um, experience in patient navigation has to do with family members. Also, I've done um, private patient navigation uh, for, for many people, for many of my own clients. Now, Mr. Dansby, um, as the founder <coughs> of Cofactors, um, there has been a, a number of different things that you have done to make sure that it's relevant in your vision of seeing it as a, a successful method and a model that can be uh, produced and developed in our community. What motivated you to start Cofactors? Well, I was motivated by the changes that we saw coming as uh, the debate about health care reform was taking place down in Washington. And as that debate evolved, I saw the opportunity for creation of real, meaningful, high-paying jobs that could be available to members of our community, uh, knowing that there were shortages of critical skills in the healthcare industry, shortages of physicians, nurses, health IT people, as I mentioned before, uh, the fact that Obamacare is being implemented just raises the bar with regards to the number of people that will be needed to perform those kinds of jobs. So we began focusing on, well, if uh, a tremendous number of jobs are going to be created by implementing Obamacare, how can we be proactive to help ensure that people from our community are able to take advantage of those opportunities. So that really was a major motivation. And what we're also looking at is attracting individuals who have background not only in healthcare, 
but people who have social service backgrounds and skills that relate to making sure that once this program is implemented, it is effectively uh, done uh, very quickly. Because as, as we recognize, uh, the implementation of the uh, Affordable Health Care Act mm -hmm. will begin to start this year. Yes. That's correct. That's correct. So there, there are a number of um, moving parts, as they say. Mm -hmm. uh, this is all happening very quickly, uh, and a number of things have to be worked in parallel in order to be in a position to deliver health care services to all the people that will be coming into the health care system. In New Jersey, there are approximately 850,000 uninsured people and um, we will be working with various organizations and health care providers in order to make arrangements for delivering care to these people, but also for making arrangements to engage with high school and college students and people who are seeking to upgrade their career paths in order to take advantage of some of the new career opportunities. And we're very delighted to be a part of this outreach effort. As you know, We Care Partners is your public awareness community resource, and we are involved with ensuring that the information that is important for you to be able to find ways to take advantage of creating safe and healthy communities will be provided to you through this resource. We'd like to thank the Honorable Mayor Wayne Smith again for giving us an opportunity to provide this kind of a relationship with this organization and we'll be very happy to engage in any other opportunities that will exist in the future. Uh, Mr. Dansby, if anyone wants to get in contact with you to get further information, how might they be able to do that? The best way is to go to our website, which is at www.cofactors.org. That's www.cofactors.org. There's a contact page on the website where you can fill in information and submit it and we will get back to you quickly. And if there are any other questions that you might have, you can always contact me at WeCarePartners, WeCarePartners.com or 973-847-1983 or call the mayor and let them know that we're doing a good job. I'd like to thank you very much for giving me an opportunity, and we're going to be looking at some more opportunities where we can be able to talk and get engaged in this process. Thank you very much. Thank you so much thank for you. having us. <laughs> and thank you for tuning in.